Manchester City not only won the Premier League this last season, but they also went, hey, why don't we try and smash every single record imaginable in the process? That included most points, most goals and most wins, and of course the thing that everyone loves to talk about, the most amount of money spent in a Premier League transfer window. And even though the 2017-2018 campaign is now over, City said to themselves, well we've got a World Cup, why don't we break some more records? And while we're doing that, we can also kick ass on the teeth by taking one away from them. And that's exactly what they've done because no fewer than 16 Manchester City players are heading to the World Cup, and that means they do indeed usurp Arsenal who had held that for about 12 years. And if you are an Arsenal fan like me, you now know that's just more nonsense we've got to put up with. Arsene Wenger's gone, we're not in the Champions League, and the only transfer rumour we have at the moment is that Fellaini may be coming to the club. Awesome. So yeah, Manchester City just beat Arsenal's World Cup record. Why? Hey! Here's why. First up is Bernardo Silva of Portugal. The pint-sized playmaker missed out of the Euros in 2016 following a horrific injury, which now means at the World Cup, he's going to want to smash it on the biggest stage possible. After all that, he did indeed shine for Monaco, which earned him a move to Manchester City, and we all know what he did there. He played really good football. Next is David Silva for Spain. At 32, Silva is undoubtedly a veteran and must be going into this tournament with all the confidence in the world because he was indeed named in the PFA Player of the Year team for 2018. And also, he somehow manages to find space even when there doesn't look like space. Finally, this is probably his last World Cup ever, so what other reason you need to try and light up the world? Keep an eye out. Then we have Benjamin Mendy for France. Mendy may have spent most of his first season at the Etihad on the bench, but he still enjoyed himself to the fans because he was really good at Twitter. That's not a joke either. Go check out Mendy's social media game. It's on fire. And because of that, everybody loves him. Well, City fans, no one else. Oh, unless you're French, but you know what I mean. Fourth is Nicolas Otamendi for Argentina. And all you need to know about that is that Pep Guardiola once described him as Superman. Think of that. The best manager on the planet says you're Superman. You don't need to need anything else. Don't need to read papers. Don't need to hear anybody else's opinion. All that means is you're good. And of course, Sergio Aguero features here. He's going to be playing for Argentina. With over 300 goals to his name, Aguero has absolutely smashed it at club level, but when we get to the international scene, he hasn't really fulfilled his potential, and neither has this Argentinian team. Which brings us to Gabriel Jesus for Brazil. Embodying the quintessential rags to riches story that many of the best Brazilian players do, Jesus had to watch on as a 17-year-old four years ago, as Brazil were absolutely whooped by Germany. Two years after that, though, he was not only starting games for his international side, but he was scoring goals you know he's going to want to continue that when he's off in Russia. Staying with Brazil, it's Danilo. Arriving at the Etihad in a £26.5 million transfer from Real Madrid, where he never really fulfilled his potential, you may also be interested to know his home village only has a population of 15,000 people, and yet we found this diamond in the rough. And there's another Brazilian in the form of Fernandinho. Back in 2014, he was almost treated like a scapegoat for everything that happened in that game between Germany and Brazil. But since then, he's been playing in the Premier League with Manchester City and running wild, giving us another tournament on a big stage. As we've mentioned, here's another guy that's going to want to make amends. More Brazilians too with goalkeeper Edison. Keeping 16 clean sheets for Manchester City this season, it doesn't matter how good Edison is, He's not even Brazil's number one. That position goes to Roma's Alison Becker, but here's the thing, Edison, you've got to be ready. Always be ready. And tenth on the list is Ilkay Gundogan. Gundogan agonisingly missed out on Germany's 2014 triumph, which means now he's going to want to get a medal of his own. The pressure's doubled. The Sane didn't make it. Now on your shoulders, Gundogan. Don't let anybody down. Vincent Company for Belgium is next, even though at the moment he is suffering from an injury. His intelligent diplomacy and experience, though, makes him a great squad player, even if he doesn't play, because the wealth of knowledge he can pass on is going to help everybody that puts on a Belgian shirt. Another super Belgium who's World Cup bound? Manchester City's Kevin De Bruyne. Now, you don't need me to tell you much about his football skills. He's one of the best players in the world. But as a random aside, he didn't own his first car until 2015. And when he's not playing football, he enjoys watching nature documentaries and baking. So next time you think about old Kevin, he's not on a pitch, he's either watching like a deer run through the forest, or he's eating some homemade cookies. Then naturally, is Carl Walker for England. For about a week, Carl Walker was the most expensive defender ever, until Man City broke their own record and purchased Benjamin Mendy. Even still though, Walker has been great value for money lighting up the Premier League, and let's keep everything crossed, but he does so for England 
during this year's World Cup. Following on from that is Walker's teammate John Stones. Despite costing City an eye-watering 50 million back in 2016, he probably didn't play as much as he wanted to last season, but again, that's what the World Cup is for. You've got to get out there, Stones, and prove to Pep Guardiola that you deserve to be a regular week in, week out. Next. Raheem Sterling. The former Liverpool winger has grown amazingly under Pep Guardiola and he has scored 23 goals in all competitions this season. He caused a crazy amount of havoc for a bunch of Premier League defenders too. And now Raheem, you've got to go out there, as I've said to everyone on this list, and do it again. But you've got to do it on a stage where the world is watching. That's what's called the World Cup. Whole world. Finally, we have Fabian Delph. 12 months ago, if I had told you that Fabian Delph was going to be a surefire thing for the World Cup, you would have said that's about as likely as Kim Jong-un going to South Korea and going, hey, let's be friends, or even having a meeting with Donald Trump. But now both have actually happened, and maybe the former is even more surprising than the latter. But Fabian Delft, you more than earned your place. I actually think you're underrated. You're spectacular. And there it is, proof if you needed, right in your face. And well done to Manchester City for breaking yet another record in 2018. You know what? You know what's worse? They're probably going to do it next year too. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. Like, share and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureFC. My name is Simon Miller. This was What Culture Football. And I just want to say it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I'll see you on the other side.